Hello everyone, my name is Gus. I'm a cave diver and also a scuba instructor and the co-host of Dive Talk. I'm also a shearwater diver and I know a lot of you watching this video are also shearwater divers who love their computers as much as I do. However, there's a lot of features in these computers. So I wanted to put together my top three I don't know if to call them hidden features or perhaps things you didn't know you can do with your Shearwater computer. Let's go. So one of the things that I noticed when I got my Shearwater Perdix, which is this computer that I have right here in my hand, is that you know those initial open water dives that you do on a confined water, basically in a pool, um, are tracked in the system and you have to delete them later on. I had to go back and kind of reset it so those dives wouldn't count. You know, all the dives you do during your open water class and perhaps if you moved on and did the, uh, you know, the perfect buoyancy or peak performance buoyancy class and some of these other classes, you're diving in the pool and all of those are being registered as dives. I wanted the dives on my computer to be accurate. So one of the things we can do is actually switch the diving mode on the computer from open circuit recreational mode, which is how we all get started, to gauge mode, or as I like to call it, instructor or student mode. So class mode, basically. What happens is when you switch your computer into gauge mode, the computer will actually do a couple cool things. Let's switch to the other camera so I can show you how this works. Okay, so here we have my Perdix, as I mentioned before. Let's go ahead and turn it on so I can show you how this works. Okay, so right now my Perdix is set to CC or closed circuit because I was diving rebreathers this past week, and so we're gonna switch that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the left button all the way to system setup. Okay. And here in mode setup, I'm going to edit that and switch to gauge. Notice that it is the last option right there, gauge. When you when you hit save into gauge mode, it's gonna tell you like, look, I'm going to be resetting your deco tissues um, that I was keeping track of after your latest dive. So I'm gonna say, yep, no worries, confirm, I'm gonna be diving in a pool, and the computer will go ahead and reboot itself. So it says, now I'm on gauge mode, the compression tissues are not tracked in gauge mode. No problem. All I need is to be able to keep track of the information, you know, while I'm diving in the pool. So I'm going to go ahead and click continue. Now notice that the font is way bigger when you're in gauge mode, which is pretty awesome. And, you know, if you want to get technical about it, I guess you could say that this is now a bottom timer, but it's like a really advanced bottom timer. Um, and the main reason for that is, look, I can go to the right hand side and I can see my pressure. So if your Perdix is air integrated or your Tarek or your whatever petrol, whatever computer, the petrol is actually not air integrated, but if you're using the Nerd, for example, this works the same in any computer you have. Now, even though the Petrol 2 and the Peregrine, for example, are not air integrated, you can still go into gauge mode. So it will still tell you your depth and your time and all of that. It also has a cool feature like stopwatch. So for instructors, for example, watching this video, there's some exercises that we do based on time. Like for example, maybe you wanna time 30 seconds breathing from a free flowing regulator, let's just say. So you can start and stop a stopwatch uh, in here with the options watch. Start the stopwatch. And now you can keep track of that timer, right? As they're breathing from their free flowing regulator. And again, that's just an example. And then at any point you can go ahead and stop it and there it goes. So really, really useful to place the computer in gauge mode. Like I said, the font is way bigger. You can still track your air pressure. You can still track, you know, everything basically about your dive. How long has it been? What depth? Of course, that will be, you know, 12 feet or three meters, four meters, whatever it is, the, the you know, depth of the pool. But it's really awesome that we have this mode. So your dives are actually not logged even though we might, you know, spend a bunch of time on a pool during the weekend, you know, teaching students or learning from an instructor. The next thing I want to talk about is actually the gas selector. So we're going to move from the taking a class mode or recreational mode, and we're going to move into a more technical mode. So I'm going to switch back my computer into closed circuit, although this will work with open circuit tech, or if you're doing, you know, three gas decompression dives, Regardless of, of what you're doing, this will work for you. So 
let me switch to the other camera and explain what I mean by this second hidden feature, or perhaps you didn't even know you can do this. So here we are still in CC mode. So I'm going to go ahead and bail out to show you what this looks like when it comes to gas selection. So because I'm on the surface, I'm at zero feet, uh, basically, it's suggesting that I should be bailing out to 99% O2. But the thing is, if I'm actually diving and I need to select the gas, you will notice that the classic way to display it is actually in big letters. And it always sorts it from the richer mix first all the way to the one with the least amount of oxygen. So 99% will be first, then 52. Notice that this one is off, but I still have it as an option. If I select this option, it will go ahead and turn it on for me. Then it will be 32, then 1640, and then 10 uh, as my last bailout gas that I have in the system. So I can actually select the gas that I need, you know, you know through the menu. Now. In order for us to modify the way this works, we're going to navigate into the system setup. So I'm going to go ahead and click on there. And we have to go into the advanced section, the advanced settings. So I'm going to navigate all the way there. Go to advanced configuration. That's what we need to go. We're going to click on edit and then edit again. And notice that right at the bottom, it says gas select classic. That is the default configuration for the Perdix and the Petrol and, you know, these tech computers from Shearwater. So we're going to go ahead and click on edit in this case. Uh, we don't want to change that. So we're going to save that. We're going to click on next, next, next right here, edit and change. We're going to change that to new, right? So we're going to switch from uh, classic to new. We're going to click next, next, and just basically exit out of here. Now watch this. When I go into select gas, now the menu is completely different. It shows me all of the options that I have in one place. Now, obviously the font is small. If you have, you know, um, if you don't have great vision, that might be a problem. But the other thing I like is that it knows how deep I am and it actually highlights the best gas for my mix, which is based on the partial pressure of oxygen for that particular depth that I'm in. It is hard to show you that without being at depth, without diving. So let's watch this video so you can see how this looks under the water. I've got the pressure sensor wired into a pressure tank and I'm running a, a simulated dive here and I've racked up some decompression because I want to show you an advantage of the new gas select style. Uh, before I do that, I'm just going to show you what gases I've got turned on right now. Okay, and I'm going to start the ascent. And I'm going to ascend very quickly for this demonstration. And at some point, my current gas, there it goes, is going to change to uh, an inverted yellow text. And what that is trying to alert me is that uh, there's a better gas programmed for this depth. And if I go here to select gas, uh, we'll see that the better gas is already uh, selected here and I just have to press select here to confirm. On the classic style, you had to scroll through starting at the highest oxygen content gas. And so this is less button presses in most cases. And how does it determine what the best gas? Well, the petrol is going to assume that during decompression stops, you're going to be using the gas with the highest PPO2 that is less than 1.6. And that is what I've changed to. Note that the time to surface right now, that, that's a prediction. And the accuracy of this prediction is based on assuming that you're going to be switching to the appropriate gases at the appropriate depths. Now because oxygen is turned off, it is not included in those calculations right now. If I was to exit out of this menu and go to dive setup, define gas, and turn this on, Now my 67 minute time to surface has dropped to 52 minutes. So you can see it's very important to only turn on the gases that you're actually carrying and planning to use if you want to have accurate decompression predictions. And the third feature you probably didn't know that your Shearwater computer can do is that if you have a Shearwater computer that has a built-in compass and you have enabled that electronic compass on the computer, depending on where you are in the world, the compass might not be accurate or might not be as accurate 
as it would be in other parts of the world. I don't know if you've noticed this, but sometimes when you're trying to buy a compass, it would even ask you if you're on the north, you know, uh, or north of the equator or south of the equator, and you have to kind of decide on what to do. And you can buy, you know, you can buy a compass that is good for both, but the problem is, is that there's something called magnetic declination, or true north, as Shearwater calls it, which is that depending on where you are in the world, you have to adjust your compass or else you might miss you know, your target. So for example, later this year in November, I'll be going to Chuck Lagoon. And in Chuck Lagoon, when you Google magnetic declination in Micronesia in Chuck Lagoon, the result is minus 0 0.02, which is, you know, if, I, if I'm heading for, let's say 120 degrees, you know, I can aim for 119.98 and I'm gonna hit, you know, the target. So it really doesn't make a difference. It's so tiny. The variance is so tiny that I'm not going to adjust my compass for Chuck Lagoon. It's going to work just fine. But if I was going to the Galapagos, for example, which I haven't been and I want to go to, the variance in the Galapagos is actually minus 3.99 or minus 4 degrees. So that means that if I jumped in the water and I had to swim, let's say, at 120 degree heading, and depending on the distance, I might miss my target, right? If the visibility isn't great, I might be off by 20 or 30 feet or whatever from my target or a few meters from my target and completely miss whatever I was, you know, looking for, a rag or whatever it is. So because of that, Shearwater actually gives us the opportunity to adjust our true north or our magnetic declination. So whenever you're about to go on a trip, just Google whatever destination plus the words magnetic declination and Google will tell you, well, the magnetic declination for that place is plus 14 or minus seven or whatever it is. And then we can go into our computer and adjust it. So when we jump off the boat, if we're doing navigation with a computer, we're gonna hit the target every time. So let me show you how that works in my Shearwater Perdix. So here we are still in closed circuit rebreathers. So in order to adjust the true north, I'm going to go back into the system setup. So once again, I'm going to click on the menu, go to system setup. There is a whole menu just for the compass, which is also the menu where we calibrate it, which you probably did this when you bought your computer. It told you to calibrate it. And if you ever change the battery, it's a good idea to re you know, recalibrate the compass. So I'm going to go to next, next, and just looking for that menu that will say compass there. And once we get there, notice that you have the calibrate. And notice that you have the compass view, which is how many degrees you can see uh, on the screen when you're using the electronic compass. You probably knew that already, but you probably didn't know that this true north feature is there exactly to allow you to adjust it based on where you're going. So let's say we're going to the Galapagos is minus four, as I mentioned before. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on edit. I'm gonna change that from a plus to a minus. I hope you can see that. Then I'm gonna go to next and then next once again, and I'm going to adjust that to minus four, as you can see. So now I'm going to save it. It's adjusted for minus four, which is perfect for the Galapagos. So if I'm doing any navigation that requires a compass, I'll be good to go. So there you have it guys, the top three features you probably didn't know your computer can do. Shearwater computers are amazing. They can do a lot of things, but once again, there are some of those hidden options that you never really mess with because you didn't know they were there to begin with. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider subscribing to this channel uh, so we can continue to create content for you. And we'll see you on the next one.